Lee, you must be really pleased with that performance. There was a lot of willingness and desire from the side. Uh, yeah, probably. When I'm looking at the video back, I'll feel a sense of that. Um, but at the moment, I suppose the emotion is disappointment, really, because we felt we had enough in us there to, to take first and take the two points. And yeah, there were a, a patch in the second half where we were on top. We um, got within a couple of points, and then we feel like we've scored a try in this corner here. Um, but it's not given. Um, and then a couple of opportunities or good field position, we just squandered a little bit, and then obviously one one quality bit of play from one individual from their team just sort of took it out to eight points and probably just burst the bubble a little bit. On Joe Rundle's no try, I'm led to believe you've seen the footage. I've just spoken to Brian Noble. He said he's seen the footage and he said it's a try. How much of an impact did that wrong decision have on the, the game you feel? Um, well, I don't know. I mean, I'm in the far corner there. Um, so I'm I'm assuming Joe scored just because of how it all looked. I was amazed that it, it wasn't given or he didn't get it down. So my initial thought was annoyance at Joe for not scoring it. But then having spoke to him after and Jaden, who was right next to it, there 100% that that ball was, was put down. Um, so yeah, it happens though. Um, we've got to be a little bit better. We're still within two there. We've still got Featherson on the ropes a little bit. But I do think just going in front gives us that extra bit of energy and, and probably um, just does something psychology to them, psychologically to them maybe. But it didn't happen, so we, we stayed two behind um, and then just didn't help herself in the last 20 minutes with, with some of the things we were doing. So we'll need to be better than that, but it's good. We've, we've come out with it, um, knowing that we can compete with, these, with the top team, uh, the benchmark and the division. Um, and we've got some stuff that we can improve on as well, so that's good. Is that the overriding positive for you at this moment in time, the fact that you've pushed top of the table Ferguson literally all the way, they've had to work hard for every point? Yeah, yeah, when I mean, we spoke about going for 80 minutes, I, I think we did go for 80 minutes effort-wise, but we're obviously we were eight points behind, so it'd be nice to have that within a try um, going into the last few minutes, but it wasn't to be. Um, we just made too many mistakes. I know Featherston made them as well, but, but when you're playing Featherston, Every, every tackle's a challenge. You look across the board and that's, that's a big set of human beings out that they've assembled and put together. So every tackle's a challenge, and even when you're running, it's a challenge. Um, the, the big, the physical, they have been that all season. You see a lot of teams just batting into submission within 20, 25 minutes, and we were that. So that, that was the first hurdle we had to get over, and we got over that well. And we were in it for for the vast majority, maybe not quite 80 minutes, but we were there We were there going into the last 20. So a little bit of disappointment in some of the things we did in the last 20 minutes, just, just to not give ourselves a fighting chance of taking the game. Do you feel Featherstone were there for the taking, like you have alluded to, to Lee, they come up with quite a, a, a number of errors this afternoon? Yeah, and we did as well. So both teams have made quite a number of errors, it wasn't just them making them and not us. So I think after, after getting over the disappointment and not not winning the game, which we set out to do, and we, which we always set out to do. Um, we've got some stuff to tidy up. We, that wasn't us at our absolute best and Fev on an off day. We, we put, some, put some ball down as well. So while the effort was 100% there and physically and everything like that, you know, the effort was outstanding. We can't question anyone's attitude or anything like that. Um, but there were just some elements where we could have been a lot better. There were quite a few unforced errors, errors in the tackle. Um, and some, some not great decisions that we made. So we, we can be a lot better, and that's probably the best positive to take out of this. How pleased are you though that you were in that, that arm wrestle after Brad Day's first try, you know, there's a good 20 minute period, and then we see some Lee Gaskell magic, and like you say, you know, you, you, you're competitive for the full 80 minutes. Yeah, and that's that was one of the challenges, or the main challenge we set really. Um, I've watched Featherstone a lot this season, and just physically they've sort of just battered teams into submission early in the game. Um, they keep you within your own half, you struggle to make metres, you kick out your own 20, they get the ball back on the halfway line and that's a general cycle of a lot of their games at the start. So we knew we'd have to suffer a little bit, but I think we got we got over that, we even started quite well. Um, maybe didn't didn't make the right decisions at the end of the set when we were down that end. Um, and yeah, we got, we got one bit wrong, one bit wrong, we had a man left in the tackle. Um, it was really late coming out, which meant we were short on our line and then we had big spaces in there. And they're a good team and they spotted a bit of space and they're hard to start one-on-one, -on -one, especially the knee line, that's where the try came from. 
Um, but we fought our way back in. You know, territory wise, we weren't doing too bad. I think the start of the second half was probably what Fev wanted to do to us right at the beginning of the game. They, they camped us in our own half, we were having a kick out of our own 20. And then a try came off the back of it, and that's probably what they wanted to do with us. But again, we, we showed a lot of resilience, we came through that. Uh, and then we got on top for a long patch, and we scored one. Have or should have scored two, and maybe even another one. So that's for us to look at now, and um, we can improve on that. But if ever gone now, his focus turns to York. How much did Fenton Rogers having to go off inside 15 minutes and then not returning? You know, when you look at the energy sapping conditions, you're playing a very large, big physical Feverson side. How much did that have a, a bearing on proceedings? It does when you lose anyone, really. You can't, can't bring back on. Um, you have a sort of plan in your head of what your interchanges are going to be. You only get eight, obviously. Um, on a day like today, they were generally going to be all forwards. Um, that we're going to be changed round, but yeah, it leaves you a bit short. But we just met other people, tipped in and did some some more minutes. It happens every week. It doesn't ever go in according to plan. Someone always comes off. So, so yeah, it, it might have affected things. I, I don't know about them. Maybe they lost somebody. But yeah, we can we can look at different little bits. But overall, we can be glad with our effort that we've competed with Featherstone, um, done some of the things we set out to do. But then other things we need to be better at. On Fenton, does he miss the York game now because he did come back on that? I believe so, yeah. If he's failed his concussion test, then that means like 10 days, I think it is. So yeah, he'll miss next week. Um, but that just gives an opportunity to someone else. Everybody else has come through OK? I believe so, although we're a tough physical encounter. So sometimes we'll get to tomorrow or Tuesday and we'll find out that someone's got a knock and just played through it. There were a few people holding shoulders and arms and all sorts. So we'll see. But yeah, as far as... Um, now goes and, and everyone walking around all limbs attached then we're all good on those errors and I think it was a couple of last tackle playsley where it looked like the players forgot it was the last tackle do you put that down to the intensity of the game and, 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 and how it's going because you know yeah, it, was, it was very unlike Bradford you know to, to yeah, do that yeah it does it does um, it does that to you so I think the fill one maybe on our second set where we'd we got a bit of rook speed, made it a bit quick, and instead of doing the thing that we practised to do, we, we got a bit flustered and thought, oh, let's try score here, and just did something slightly different. But that is what it does. Um, it's, a, it's a big physical effort, and you could see sometimes at the end of a defensive set, um, the energy that had taken out of us um, to, to try to stop them. So sometimes the start of our sets were what, exactly what we wanted. Um, but then, like you're right, some of the end of the sets where people have just got to stay sort of calm in the mind. Um, maybe just lost it a little bit, but I, I don't want to criticise certainly individuals when, when the overall team performance and everyone's collective effort were, were so high. So we'll have a look at them. It's, there's some of those that we can look at, some of the things we've decided to do that, that we can look at. Um, but then there were some errors in the tackle as well at key moments that, that probably were, well, work great so we'll look at those but we do that every week anyway you just made one change which was brad england coming in for corner wing with obviously joe rundle and, and Jaden going on, on the wing um is that just you needed brad england back in that back row option we we felt we could improve from last week there were, there were some things that um we needed to be better at so we just made the call to do that uh, to bring brad in um, put Joe back out the centre and put Jaden on the wing. So that's what we did. I thought Jaden and Fogg were both really good. Um, and, and, it, and it seemed to work. You know, we, like I say, I can't fault any individuals. It wasn't down to a, a certain thing where we've lost today. It's, it was a collective effort to get ourselves in a good position and be competitive. But then probably a collective thing where we've just not quite not quite got the results. So yeah, we'll look overall. Um, but yeah, there's, there's some guys that been waiting patiently, ready for opportunities, and and if everybody that comes in takes an opportunity like Brad has today, then we'll be alright for the rest of the season. Liam Tyndall was in the 21-man squad, didn't feature, what, what, what's happened there, Lee? We um, the, we, had, we did have some doubts, I, think I didn't name him during the week, but we did have some injury doubts going right up until yesterday, um, so we had Ben Blackmore in the squad who was out last week, um, Dave Foggy Johnson hasn't trained all week, so there were a couple of variables going in. So we named Liam in there. As it turned out, our own players could play. So it were all good. All worked out really well that we could go with our own players first. And just uh, finally from me, Lee, you mentioned Ben Blackmore, Chester Butler. Uh, they, they must be 
close now. Do you, do you expect them to, to be back? Um, I hope, I'm hoping Chester will be. Ben, we're not sure about. Um, we'd have liked to have him on the field training this week and playing today. Um, so he hasn't he hasn't trained since before Swinton game where he pulled up in training. So until he can sort of train and, and show us that he's fit and show himself that he's fit, then obviously he can't be in contention. So we, we're up in the next this week, um, but we haven't seen him train yet since since he hurt his back. So we'll see. Just one final word: Deck Patton wasn't in the squad. Deck Patton wasn't in the squad. Lee, what's the latest with Deck? Or what's the message from you and Brian to Deck? No, anyone who was not playing just got a. Be patient, keep training hard, and then an opportunity yeah. probably will come or may come. And you know the same message that has gone to other people that have come in, like Brad. Um, Brad's had a disrupted season. He's been wanting to play, and we've had to keep telling him to be patient, keep training hard. He's done that, and then he's taken his opportunity today. And that's that's the same for everyone. I'm sure there'll be one or two enforced changes um, next week, or well, they'll have to be. Um, so that provides opportunities for a couple of guys to come in. Is Conor Wynn for you fit? He's fit as an injury fit, yeah. He's just struggled for general fitness all season as Conor. Um, obviously played a bit out of position last week for us. Um, did okay in some aspects and not, not so good in others. Um, but he's in there, he's in the squad, he's, he's training hard, so if we need to call back upon him, we can do. Has today's performance league giving you that added confidence that you can compete against a side like Featherstone in the playoffs if it comes to it, obviously? Um, it's not giving me any more because I knew we could anyway. Um, whether it's given some other people around the place or some of the players in the changing room, then it could have possibly have done. But I'm hopeful that they were all confident anyway and had the belief that we could do. Um, certainly in training, going into the game and in the game itself, it looked like they were confident enough and, and tried to take. Featherston on, so, so not for me, I've not learned anything as in knowing that we can now compete with them, I'm not any different, um, I, I knew we could anyway, so it's just the bits of, now we, we, now we know we can do that, what what can we do to, to get on the right side of the result, which we're going to need to do going forward. Seems to be a lot of freedom of initiative in the performance today, was this something that you encouraged before the game, particularly against a side like Featherston? We've just got, we've got good players that spot things, so... I suppose an element of coaching is either you structuring everything, coming up with absolutely everything, or giving them a bit of a base where they can have a look and spot things as and when, as and when they're on. Um, as long as you've got sort of a, a basic sort of game plan and sort of thing to go at, and that's, that's what we do. Um, we've got good players in there who, who do spot things. It'd be daft of me to structure and, and keep it all rigid when you've got likes of George Lilly, um, Lee Gaskell, Tom Holmes, um, and even on the edges, people like Gilly and Joe. You know, there's a lot of smart people who've been around and know how to score points and create things and spot things. So there's an element of that. What you see is, is the players spotting things on the run um, and going for it. We just try to tell them to be ready in every scenario to be able to go forward and play. I think that's what most coaches will do. Now. And you mentioned in previous weeks about being consistent for the full 80 minutes. Is this probably the most complete in terms of that, this performance today? Um, possibly. I mean, you can you can still look through it and pick out a lot of errors, whether that would have a concentration or fatigue. I'm not sure. Um, but in some of the games where you know you and people speaking to me have suggested it's um, not playing for the 80 and inconsistency and stuff like that, the effort has always been there. I think. So even in the in the games which have been grim scoreline wise, we've still been going for eighty. We've all been disappointed, frustrated, but I don't think the team's ever given up. Um, last couple of weeks, not been pretty. We've had to take on two desperate teams in Newcastle and Swinton, and you can look at scrappy sort of performances. But we've still gone right up to eighty minutes, and we've still put the effort in to do it, and, and we've done that today. It's not been perfect. Um, we've still made a lot of errors. Um, but we've done well to, to keep probably Featherstone to that scoreline with the amount of errors that we've made.